what's going on, family? Real quick, real quick, a Bibi Fahudie to my brother, brother Bomani. Uh, appreciate everybody who's pulling up today. You already know, as soon as you pull up, uh, make sure you go ahead and hit that like button as soon as you pull up into the room. Uh, if you haven't done so already, what's going on here? I'm hearing a little bit of uh, echo, a little bit of reverb. I don't know if I'm getting interference from the electronics over here, but it sounds a little... A little crazy. I don't like the way that sounds. So, hold on, hold on. Let me unplug my mic real quick. Hold on. All right, testing, testing. That sounds a lot better. That sounds a lot better. Peace, this is Ikea. Peace, this is Felicia Gray listening while she's at her workout. Uh, my brother, brother Bomani. Um, family, we're gonna get right into it. Um, you know what? I think I know what it is. Give me one second, y'all. I got this heater on. I feel like that might be what's happening. It might be picking it up. My heater in the background. Give me one second. All right. All right. All right. That's a lot better. That's a lot better. That's a lot better. That actually fixed fixed a problem. Um, so what's good, family? Um, this this might actually be my last live stream of the year um, heading into 2022. Um, if you were here yesterday, uh, we had the opportunity to do kind of like part one um, as, you know, I guess a response to this BGS Ipmore um, discussion. Um, just to give you a bit of history behind, you know, what has occurred back uh, in early December, uh, I put out episode 16 of the Race, Manhood, and Power podcast, and the name of that episode was Guardians of the Gynocracy and Scorched Black Pills, right? So following that particular broadcast, um, BGS Itmore and Edward Anderson both did live streams responding to that broadcast, responding to my critique of the gynocracy idea. Um, they were both pretty frustrated. Uh, Edward did somewhat of an incel rant that he has since removed uh, from YouTube, but I do have uh, a recording of it. And BGS attempted to do, I guess, like an intellectual kind of like play by play or breakdown where he basically pulled up my video and I think my video was about two hours long. Maybe he got through like 45 minutes, which was mostly like the introduction. Uh, and he was on a play by play. So what I'm going to do today is respond to a lot of the points that um, that he brought up. Now, when I first watched it, I, I took down over like two pages of, I guess, like timestamps. But that is far too much uh, to, to get into tonight. So I'm not going to do it at that level. Um, but I am going to play uh, the clips to his response and right away I'm going to respond to them one by one just so that we can have the conversation. You understand? Because I feel like we have a situation where. Um, and listening to some some of his responses to me, like like I, I can't take them serious. Um, this is somebody who's supposed to be um, an intellectual and I don't want to throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? I know we, yesterday we had fun. Yesterday was entertainment. You know what I mean, we had a little bit of jokes. You know what I mean, called him, called him the bootleg Gnostic. But I do want to, you know, if I'm being serious, like the brother is well read, right? He he clearly like reads a lot. Um, he has a lot of information. He's somebody in my mind who has you know, the right amount of curiosity and the, and the desire to be like a continued learner, right? But with all that said, and with all the information that he has, I'm like, man, this guy can't be that stupid. Um, and what I mean by that is I'm listening to some of his critiques and responses to me. And I'm like, yeah, clearly, um, you know, he doesn't get it. So what I want to do uh, this evening with the time that we have together, let me just get my my screen situated here, so we all on the same page. And uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to look at the chat from my phone this evening, so I can have more landscape, uh, more real estate on my 
my screen while we're having uh, this conversation. I think that that would. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. right. Without any motherfucking further ado. Let's get back into it. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and get started again. I should have just started a whole, uh, a whole different fucking stream. Um, but it is what it is. I didn't do it. So we're going to have to do it like this on the fly. So let me see who we got in the building. Shout out. Put, put a one in the chat. If you stuck around through the, through, through the nonsense. All right. So shout out to sister. I feel only. Shout out to everybody who stuck around. Uh, through, through the nonsense, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes they, they try to throw a little monkey wrench into the plan, throw a little monkey wrench into the system. So, you know, I don't really be knowing what's going on sometimes. You know what I mean, but listen, the BGS is here. Uh, if we got some time towards the end, beloved, you can definitely uh, uh, pull up, had a conversation. Look, that's, that's a lot of love. I appreciate the love. Shout out to everybody who stuck around through the bullshit. Um, but let's get started. Now, unfortunately, I had to restart my computer. So basically what I'm going to need to do here is just pull up this uh, this clip. And like I said, I'm going to respond to it in real time. But since I had to restart my computer, I had like 30 tabs just pulled up and they were all time stamped sequentially where I wanted to do the responses. But, you know, we got to we got to work around it because now I no longer have that because the computer shut down on me but this shit is what it is we back and we about to get get to it so let me start by doing this right here give me one second all right i think that makes a lot of sense all right cool 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 let me share my screen all right this is where shit went haywire the last time when i attempted to share my screen it just went crazy on me all right so we are officially up. All right, cool. We up and we running. So as you can see, this video, it's a black pill response to Omawali Africa and at CJNBM. Uh, BGS put this up on his channel um, back on December, December 7th, 2021. So I am going to uh, just do a play by play and have the conversation. So I'm going to start here at where we're going to start. I want to start at the nine minute and 35 minute mark or somewhere close to that. So let's let them rock out. And the only reason black women are listening to us now is because of the gender war. And you know that you've broken through because you have all these blue pill people crying. You didn't have this before because you were mostly ignored. So Basically, what do men get if they win the gender war? They get their rights back. They get an equal playing field as far as having their children. They have less broken families. They don't have to worry about uh, females taking advantage of them with pregnancy in in the child support court. They get The black men get the right to date who they want to date or date where they can date. Black boys get the right to have an education equal to the the women in the system. Because really, it's not just about black women and and strong families, because we don't have strong families now. Gender war has had no effect on strong families, period. They ain't got them now. All right, let me just pause that there. So, wanted to play those first. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm 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 gonna respond as we go because we're gonna do this in real time. So he um, was answering the question. Um, uh, the the guy who he was first responding to before me asked, like, if there's a gender war, then what are the so-called spoils of the war, right? What do black men get if black men win the gender war? So, BGS acknowledges, yes, there is a gender war. Um, and what are the spoils of that war? He started to lay out all those things. If black men win this war against black women, uh, black men will be able to date who they want to date. Black men will be placed on equal footing uh, with black women uh, within the system. Right. When I heard that particular statement, I'm like, at least he came out and said it. At least he said that as black men 
one of their goals and objectives for this said gender war is for the system of white supremacy to place us on the same footing uh, with our black women, right? So the goal is not to defeat the system of white supremacy, right? The goal is for the system of white supremacy to give us the same rights that it is given to black women, right? So if you um, remember when I, when I did my um, discussion on uh, the political unicism of divested politics, and by unicism, I'm referring to like eunuchs, right? Men who've been castrated. Um, BGS represents the exact profile of what I'm talking about. When you hear this man speaking, you are listening to a black man who has been politically castrated. This is a black man who has had his nuts removed and in his fight with his woman his highest desire and highest ideal is to have another man place him on equal footing with his woman his goal is not to fight the man that is subjugating both he and his woman his goal is to say hey it's not fair how you're treating us as black men we as black men should be given the same rights that you've given to our women right this is some straight bitch ass shit right i don't got to say it like very colorfully like we ain't got to say it in an entertaining way um but this is really like what it comes down to it like it really is just coward behavior um that's what it comes down to what do we win if we win the gender war well we as black men can date whoever we want you know we can you know have the same rights as our black women have like under the system like are y'all are y'all are y'all serious are these really the uh the aims and objectives of the so-called gender war, right? Y'all want to be collectively like under the nuts of the white man, but at least you're on the same footing as your woman. Like y'all sound, y'all sound crazy. You know what I mean? Hold on. Y'all sound crazy. Y'all sound out of y'all minds, but I mean, you put it all on tape. So I'm just going to go ahead and go through it. So let me, let me keep moving. Let me let it keep playing. And if you look at the trend well before this, the uh, YouTube got here, because the so-called gender war, online gender war, as they call it, is only about 12 years old. And our families have been going down for a very long time. Black boys have been going down for a, long, for a very long time. The neighborhoods have been going down for a very long time. So, so the gender war has nothing to do with, with strong black, black families. In fact, uh, most people inside of this space advocate for strong black families. But the thing is, uh, what most people in this space advocate for is black women taking responsibility for their actions, which is something that most blue pill, most pro-black, most nationalists don't want. They don't want black women to take responsibility for their actions. They want to put pin all the actions and the blame on men. Hold on, let me pause it right there. Hold on, Bomani. I see your comment. Hold on, let me scroll over real quick. We're gonna have fun with this. I'm gonna take my time. Uh, Bomani said, What? <laughs> <laughs> this dude, like, yeah, this dude is crazy. He's out of his mind, right? The, the so-called gender war has only been going on for 12 years. So I, right there, I, I don't want to put words in his mouth. I'm not saying, I'm not sure if he's saying that the gender war did not exist before YouTube. In fact, let me, let, let me play it again. Y'all, y'all help me understand. I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask the chat, the chat, y'all help me understand what's being said here. Is he saying that the gender war did not exist before YouTube? Y'all, y'all let me know what's being said here. The uh, YouTube got here because the so-called gender war, online gender war, as they call it, is only about 12 years old. And our families have been going down for a very long time. So he's saying that the gender war is only about 12 years old. And he's saying that our families have been going down for a long time. And uh, the gender war has had no impact on our families. So, like, in order to have a ha healthy family, you have to have a healthy relationship between black men and black women, right? Those are the two inputs that go into making a family and producing children. So to say that that relationship between these two entities is not relevant to the health of the family, like this is insane. Again, this is a 62 year old man uh, making these making these uh, uh, these comments and these statements here. But what I wanna do just really quickly because um, I pulled a few things up here. Uh, I brought this up to y'all yesterday. This was the article that I told y'all about um, black male and female relations, a political overview of the 1970s. 
right? This article was written by a brother by the name of Askia Torre. Um, he was one of the founders of the cultural arts movement, um, a brilliant scholar, writer, and poet, and is still living um, today. Um, but when I hear BGS say uh, that the gender war, the so-called gender war is only 12 years old and it hasn't had any impact on the black family, I'm like, yo, this dude is like out of his mind. Let me let me read this here um, for y'all because I, I, I do want y'all to um, to get this perspective that's being shared here, right? So it says here, um, this article is intended to serve as a kind of overview of the political forces at work within this society, which continues to oppress black males and females in the 1970s. I am making my presentation and comments in this form because it seems that a number of our brothers and sisters have forgotten that we are still captives within the U.S. capitalist imperialism within U.S. capitalist imperialism and not free Afro-Americans making our own decisions without external interference. What is he saying here? He's saying that it seems that a, a, number, one of, uh, a number of our brothers and sisters don't understand that our reality as subjugated people, as racialized males and females, is not wholly the domain of our own. There are external forces which are enemies to us that actively work to interfere and disrupt relations within our community. Now, this is Askia Torre writing. This is I think he wrote this in 1979. Right. So he says this will be my main emphasis rather than a detailed in depth analysis of black male female problems. The recent phenomena of the inflated uh, uh, choreo drama. Uh, four colored girls in the book Black Macho and the Myth of the Superwoman should sound a note of alarm throughout the national black community. This alarm should warn all serious political thinkers that the U.S. government's assault against our people, begun with the FBI's COINTELPRO and strengthened by Hollywood's black exploitation counter revolution. Wi Fi, want to play with me? We're going to keep going. I should make this larger so y'all can read it with me. Hold on. I'll make the screen a little bit larger because I want y'all to check out the skid to raise words. So he's basically saying, I'm giving, giving you, I'm giving y'all a reminder that this war that they are waging on us as a people, the war is not over. The war is still proceeding and they are using uh, uh, new uh, sophistication to keep this thing going, right? So it says, the, uh, where was I at? Where was I at? Uh, the COINTEL Pro was a colonial search and destroy mission transferred from the jungles of Southeast Asia to the ghettos of urban America. The Hollywood cultural counter revolution was aimed at disrupting and destroying the black cultural revolution. Uh, the cultural wing of the black, hold on, the black cultural revolution, uh, the black arts and black aesthetics movement, which was mounted in the 60s by artists, activists, grassroots, people, as the cultural wing of the black liberation movement. Okay. It says, if we briefly examine white America's stance in that period, we will recall that U.S. imperialism was fighting on two fronts, internationally against the heroic Vietnamese, Vietnamese people, excuse me, who were waging a war of national liberation in Southeast Asia and domestically against the black power revolution, allied with the anti-war movement, which together almost created a full-scale revolution in the U.S. national borders. This was the harsh colonial imperial period of the Nixon Kissinger regime, whose strategy was a repressive anti-colonial war waged militarily and culturally on a domestic front via COINTELPRO and Hollywood to smash the black revolution and its allies. Let me keep reading here. It says, since the suppression of the 1960s revolution and the discrediting of the Nixon regime, the U.S. power elite and the Rockefeller-led Trilateral Commission have created a new era, that of Christian neocolonialism embodied in the career and personage of James Earl Carter uh, and his shadow, Andrew Young, whose smiling uh, countenance announces his intentions to bind up the wounds of the nation and bring us back together. Readers might say, fine, but how does this apply to black male female relations? My point is simply this. The U.S. is still the racist, imperialistic society it has always been. However, it has shifted its strategies, both domestically and internationally, to neocolonialism and its chess game against the socialist bloc and third world liberation struggles. Domestically, 
It is still white supremacist, which means a scathing, implacable hatred for black people and an ongoing determination to foist its racist oppression upon us as long as we exist. Within its new strategy of neocolonialism, U.S. society is prepared to allow Roots 1 and 2 to be shown on Prime TV, while Jimmy Carter invites black jazz greats to the White House and sends his daughter to a predominantly black public school. The black... Pre Presence is felt on national television with numerous Negro situation comedies such as Good Times, The Jeffersons, and others. And this period, culturally, therefore, have been uh, in this period, culturally, there have been no direct hit on attacks against the black community by white America. Hollywood has even closed down its black exploitation mills, putting hundreds of dusky pimps, prostitutes, drug pushers, spies, and super niggas out of work, possibly because it figured that job was finished. However, True to the new neocolonial strategy, deadly attacks against black people are not be are now beginning to manifest within the ranks of African Americans. I want you to listen here. He says the oppressor is now manipulating confused elitist males and females who have not lived black working class structure uh, from within to act as artistic agent provocateurs and further exacerbate our explosive social problems. And yes, we have a tremendous problems. And yes, we have tremendous problems as domestically colonized people living within the citadel of world's capitalist imperialism. Unfortunately, as Dr. Fanon teaches, the colonized will often turn the legitimate rage they feel against oppression inwards by attacking each other. All right. So I wanted to, uh, to to read that and introduce that to the conversation before we kept going, because I feel that what um, Brother Askia Torre is saying there is um, incredibly important when we examine and, are, and when we're having um, conversations about this so-called uh, gender war and the black community. Now, for somebody as old as BGS is to say that, you know, the gender war has only been going on for um, 12 years and that, um, you know, the gender war has had no impact on the black family. Clearly this dude is out of his mind. I know that there, there's no way as much as he reads or the, as much as he professes to read that he can be ignorant of these facts. So the fact that he's omitting them and choosing to ignore them to uphold a particular narrative, like, I don't, I don't get it. I mean, I get it, but I, I don't get it. You understand what I'm saying? Like, it's, it doesn't really uh, make a lot of sense to me that he is doing that, but I'm going to keep on moving. So let me skip to the 16 minute and 58 second mark. And we'll start from there. Of, of YouTube. And. Uh, he has a difference of opinion about the gynocracy. Now he's a nationalist, right? Blue pill nationalist. Now, why you're over on this side? I don't know. Because most people. Uh, nationalists or conscious nationalists kind of leave the sector alone. Because me being a nationalist myself, I know what their arguments are. All right, so this is where he's starting to address me. You know, he refers to me. Hold on real, real quick. Super chat. Producer Hawk, my man, appreciate the su super chat and support of the show. Family, if y'all are here in the building, make sure y'all hit the like button. Make sure y'all share the stream. Uh, make sure y'all donate support any way that you can. Cash app, super chat, Patreon, all that good stuff to help the light stay on over here in the crib. But um, what was I saying? Oh, so this is where he starts addressing me. He's like, you know, Omawale is a blue pill nationalist. He has a problem with the gynocracy. Um, and he doesn't understand, um, you know, why these so-called blue pill guys are over here, like having uh, conversations. And then he ends it by saying as a as a nationalist himself. And I'm like, it's it's very funny to hear a lot of these guys refer to themselves as like uh, nationalists. Like, how are you a black nationalist and you're advocating uh, for black men to go and date white women and Asian women and Hispanic women and Latin women? Like, how 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 are you a black nationalist? Um, and you are engaged in the gender war, right? Right. Like it, this shit does not make sense at all, but they like to give themselves the authority 
right, to speak. So they'll say like, hey, I come from the conscious community. I come from the nationalist community. In fact, I'm a nationalist myself. I'm like, this is bullshit. This is bullshit. No, you are not a nationalist. So I don't care if you try to call me a blue pill nationalist. Listen, I'm going to call you out on your bullshit, right? The arguments that you are making, they may make sense in the little echo chambers that you exist in, uh, where people offer you deference, where people don't know as much as you know, or people haven't read as much as you've read. Um, so they, they don't even know how and when to challenge you. But if you try to run that bullshit by me, uh, no, I'm not gonna let that rock. Yeah. Um, Fatty Black says, sounds just like the FBA and ADOS folk. Absolutely. Every ADOS person that I talk to is like, yeah, I used to be a Pan-Africanist. And I'm like, okay, everybody has the same, you know, everybody has the same story. I used to be a Pan-Africanist, but now that I'm divesting from global blackness, you know what I mean? I'm not a Pan-Africanist anymore. And the same thing with these dudes, you know, I used to be a black nationalist, but now that I am divesting from black women, you know, I'm not a nationalist anymore. So these dudes is weird. But, um, you know, I said I would play his remarks and I will respond to them right on the fly. So let me go to the next part uh, real quick. Somebody says, I'm FBA 100 percent. If by foundational black American, uh, you mean that uh, you descend from uh, the African people who were enslaved in these United States, um, I am that as well, but I'll never call myself a foundational Black American or ADOS because the politics behind both of those um, identities are not race first. They are definitely American first. <laughs> and um, the aims and objectives of the set framers of those identities, meaning Tariq Nasheed and uh, Yvette Cornell uh, Tone Talks, I don't want to get into that here, but the you know the, the, those politics are basuda, <laughs> so I'm not gonna not gonna get into to, to that. But I can appreciate I can appreciate family who um who wants to uh I mean I, I don't have a problem with people who are African American such as myself having uh pride right in our lineage and heritage here. But I'm I'm cautious of some of the uh, some of the the, the 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 politics that go behind some of these new identities um, created uh, in the in the social media or area era. So hold on, Felicia Grace says, "Ados just on the strength of the justice claim." Yeah, I I I get that. You know, I don't I don't know. Like I said, I don't know if I necessarily agree with the politics or direction, but like you know, I get it. I won't refer to myself as any of those particular online identities, though. So, um, let me keep on moving. Where's the next part? All right, I'm gonna skip up to about 24 minute and 51 second mark. Kate as well. So I, I wrote this here. I said I spoke about this last night on episode 14 of the Race, Manhood, and Power podcast. Manhood or bust, right? I said it's patriarchy not the gynocracy that we should have our targets trained on as racialized men, right? So we, we as black men, right? And, 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 and patriarchy, uh, I'm, I'm specifically referring to white male patriarchy, right? Because what they do with said system, right? The system that we often refer to as a system of racism, white supremacy, right? It's a system that white men have established in order to maintain and advance their control over all of the resources on the planet, right? So it's a system by which white men are at the top of the ladder, right? They are the so-called alpha on the planet and all other non-white men, or as Dr. Tony Curry refers to, to them as, all other racialized men, such as ourselves, right? Black men are on the bottom, right? We are the global beta, right? And so when, when the white man is developing um, all of these theories and these ideologies um, and these philosophies, right? They talk about the concept of um, survival of the fittest, right? They are very clear that they are locked in a war, a war for resources, a war for supremacy on the planet with all other men, right? And if you read in the works of folks like um, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing, she speaks to um, some of their insecurities, right? Their racial or genetic insecurities, which animate uh, say at war or which drive them or fuel them to advance right this particular conflict or that they are engaging in presently and historically and as long as the future or foreseeable you know as, as long as our eyes can see I, I would say until they're defeated we'll and uh basically that's almost over you know but uh that's not his expertise geopolitics is not as part of his expertise in fact if you uh, ask the chinese or ask uh, the europeans it's pretty much over already 
as far as uh, the, their dominance. But continuing. All right, I wanted I wanted to to pull that into the conversation because um, this is a sixty two year sixty two year old black man, mind you. These are men who have declared victory in their uh, in their gender war, um, but when it comes to uh, the system of racism, white supremacy, they their argument is that that system is almost over, and the only reason I don't know that it's not that it's not over or that it's on its dying leg is because um, I don't know. Uh, geopolitics. I'm like, yo, this dude is a complete clown. Like, like it, it's it's it is very, very difficult for me to take you serious as a scholar, as an intellect, when you don't want to acknowledge just basic reality, right? Yes, we understand that the white population is on the decline, but newsflash, the white population has always been a global minority. They've subjugated and colonized the planet as a global minority. That has not changed. So if you think that we're going to get to the other side of this situation without addressing them and dealing with them, then you're out of your mind, right? China fell in rank with the global capitalist system. So China has built itself up as an economic engine, and it's engaging in its own neocolonial activities through colonial debt strategies on the African continent. <laughs> but um, that does not take away from the power that the global system of racism, white uh, supremacy currently possesses, even with their population being on the decline. I mean, if you look down to South Africa, people always say, well, in the United States, white people are going to be like a global, they're going to be a minority population here in the United States by 2050. I'm like, they're a minority population in South Africa. They still control 90% of the economy there. They still hold all of the true institutional power there, right? So I don't know. It's like, it's just very, very difficult for me to take somebody serious who just seems like they're being contrarian just to be contrarian. And then you're like talking out of your ass, talking about he doesn't understand geopolitics. Like, okay. I mean, I have an entire... uh uh I have multiple lectures dealing with geopolitics, right? For, through a pan-African lens, through an African-centered lens, right? So I don't know. It's like, it, it just becomes very difficult, fam, for me to take people serious. Hold on one second. I want to read Casual Observer. He says, BGS is spot on about white supremacy losing traction. Go to Europe, USA, Canada, et cetera, and you will see white people Losing real estate, university seats, high-paying jobs, non-whites. So listen, white people can be suffering because white <laughs> white supremacy is not about individuals. White, race, the system of racism, white supremacy, is about the power of institutions, right? The control and mechanisms that they have in place. Um, that presently control a significant part of our reality. Now, I'm not saying that these institutions are um, infallible. I'm not saying that they cannot be uh, defeated, but I'm under no false pretense or false illusion that like, you know, you know, I'm the one who continuously makes the argument that the Western world is not collapsing. The Western world is undergoing a controlled demolition, right? Because the economic reality and the technological reality is changing. So in order to maintain control in this new reality, there are going to be a lot of white people who fall by the wayside, right? There are going to be a lot of white people who fall through the cracks um, in this global adjustment or global reset. But that doesn't mean that those who presently hold the power are losing their grip on the power in any way, shape, or form. Right. And if you don't understand that, then I don't think that you have a, 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 a I don't think that you have a true grip on what's happening right now economically and technologically 
around the world. Right. So, you know, that's that's just my perspective. But I'm, I'm very, very open uh, to having the conversation. Right. So uh, combative with the nice voices, the system of racism, white supremacy, control and own every area of people activity. All right. True. Indeed. Let me let me keep on moving here because uh, we want to keep it rocking. So where are we? Twenty seven. Nineteen is where we want to start designed so that we can accept our inevitable uh, inevitable removal right from this planet right we're undergoing a uh it's a war of attrition and 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 the problem that i have um in large part with this concept of a gynocracy is that it locks us in a war of attrition with black women and not the men right who are waging war on both us and our women and are using our women as a uh strategic instrument in this war right if you look historically, you it, it's always the case. Um, there, see, that's that's the problem right there. You want to you you want to remove the blame from the women. You want to remove the responsibility from the women, because you need all the women on board. You need all the women, the whole uh, unit together. See, this this is what pisses everybody. Yeah, like I'm gonna let this keep playing, but this argument that you hear in a lot of these so called red pill spaces that um, nationalists want to remove responsibility and blame for women. I've heard, I've heard uh, men in these spaces uh, blame black women for the state of education in the black community. I've heard them blame black women for the fact that black boys can't read in the black community. I've heard them blame black women for the production of pookies and ray rays in the community. But never do we want to have a conversation about the infrastructure, about the policies, about the institutions that subjugate and dominate both black men and black women and that produce the outcomes, right? Um, the brother uh, Re uh, Real Black Media was on last night and it said he said that we love to, pr to professionalize and the effects, right? We all like to focus on the effects of a thing, but none of us want to have a conversation about the cause. So we like to look at the effects and, and you know, we punch down, right? So it's easy to place the blame of the outcomes at the feet of black women. It's a lot more difficult to examine our reality and deal with our true enemy those who are creating the environments that we all live in and are subjected to, right? But um, I'm going to let this clip continue to play here. Everybody else off, okay? And this is what, this is what nationalists do. This is what they call hoteps do, right? They, they're afraid of the gynocracy. That's the problem. Because trust and believe, if, uh, uh, said women in say in the in, in the white sphere didn't get on board with what was going on they'd get rid of them same thing with the Asians if the women don't want to get on board they're going to get rid of them because you can't have a third column inside your ranks that's that's the first part of war you, you have to get all the troops together you can't have any dissenters right the first, pe the first people that get shot in the war are the ones that won't fight I want you to hear what he's saying. You know, he's talking about the black nationalists are afraid of the gynocracy. Meanwhile, didn't he just say yesterday in the other stream that, um, you know, the powers that be right. The system of white racist and white supremacy is dismantling the gynocracy, right? They're dismantling it so that black men can be free to do whatever we want and date whatever we want. Right. And he said that, um, black women are afraid because black women and, and black nationalists understand that if black men start to do that, then that means the death of the community. But he, what else did he say? He said, but guess what? You're powerless to stop it. It's nothing that you can do about it. The community is dead. It's gone. It's nothing you can do. So which one is it? Like our, 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 our black men, like, I don't get it. You're talking about like, we're scared of the gynocracy, but then you're saying that white supremacy is dismantling the gynocracy. Like, I don't get it. Then you, you go on to further state. And as 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 evidence of our fear of the gynocracy of the gynocracy, you say if that it was Asian men or if it was another group of, of men. Right. Um, let me let me play it here because I don't want to misquote you at all. Hold on one second. I'm going to play it again. Because trust and believe if uh, uh, said women in, say, in the in, in the white sphere didn't get on board with what was going on, they'd get rid of them. 
If, if the women in the white community didn't get on board, they get rid of them. If it was in the Asian community, they get rid of, rid, of, rid of them. When you have dissenters in your ranks, you deal with them, right? So he's basically saying the same thing that Edward Anderson said, that the only way that you reset the black woman is either by extreme acts of violence or by some type of apocalyptic event, right? That's the only thing that's going to dismantle, right, the, the gynocracy. This is why it's very hard. Um, to, to take these guys serious. It's, it's very Same difficult. thing with so, the Asians. If the women don't want to get on board, they're going to get rid of them. Because you can't have a third column inside your ranks. That's that's the first part of war. You, you have to get all the troops together. You can't have any dissenters, right? The first, pe the first people that get shot in a war are the ones that won't fight. All right. So I guess black women should be shot. Uh, in this war right somebody said but what do black men want us to get on board with i guess submission cooperation is what bgs is looking for he's looking for um us to be comfortable as a people under the system that presently dominates us he's not asking black women to get on board and like let's you know we're in a war let's collectively fight and win um, this war of liberation. He's saying like, no, nah, let's not fight this war at all. We're, we're subjugated. It's nothing that we can do about it. So while we're subjugated, you just make an agreement with me that, you know, you'll submit to me and you'll follow me and you'll let, you know, basically if any privileges that the white man gives to the community, let them come to me. Right. And, and not you, if you can agree to kind of like relinquish the, the, the power that he's given you. Right. That's, that's what they want. That's what they want, like black women, um, to get on board with. Somebody said he wants chocolate white women. Like these dudes is like I said, it's they are politically castrated. They are politically castrated. Um, I don't really know any other way uh to say it. But all right, let's keep uh let's keep moving here. Where were we? 2904. So let's move to 3148. no longer see, sees its fight as a racial fight or a, a, a fight of the oppressed or the colonized people, which we are as African people in this country, we are a colonized people, right? I know something, let me, let me give a little bit of education. You're not a colonized people. You're actually, you're actually a created people. Colonies are created BGS. <laughs> like, I don't like colonies are created to say like, like, do you, do you understand the act of colonization? Like, to say, like, you're not a colonized people, you're a created people is, like, like, I, I don't know. It's like, uh, you know, you're, you're not, uh, you're not, uh, you're not a book. You're, uh, you're a gathering of bound together pages or some shit like that. Like, like you're saying, like, the same thing, but I, I guess at this point, you're just being contrary and to be contrary and, or you really don't know. You know, you know, you talk about you come from the conscious community and you, you, you're you so-called nationalist, but like you don't know basic shit like so it's laughable and, and you actually should be embarrassed. But I'll, I'll let it continue to play. And that's the thing that we've gone through and actually documented. If you actually looked at the work that we've been doing, uh, black people are actually raised and bred. Colonial, uh, colonized people is when you go to their country. You go to their country and you take over. That's a colony. Um, I don't know what history you read, but the history that I read tells me that African people were enslaved on colonies. It tells me that the British had 13 colonies here uh, in the mainland that we refer to as America. It tells me that the French had a colony here. It tells me that the Spanish had a colony here. And it tells me that on all these colonies, African people were enslaved or colonized, whatever you want to call it. But we're going to keep going because you have an issue with this term of like internal colonization. So I'm, I want to break that down, but I want to let you continue to speak and just so and show and, demonst and demonstrate your ignorance. So let me just continue to play. You colonized people on their land. We were not colonized people, okay? We were brought here. We were brought here as a workforce, and then we we're bred like cattle. 
We actually, with the black people, the Negro race is actually a created race by white people and white capitalism. But anyway, continuing. I know people are going to be like, well, hold on. Let me jump to this part right here. US, uh, uh, who, who developed that concept? I believe it was, um, what's the gentleman's name who wrote um, The Crisis of the Negro Intellectual? Harold Cruz? I believe it was Harold Cruz who wrote a paper back in either 1960 or 1957 about America being an internal colony. Maybe someone wrote about that before him, but that was probably one of the first um, people that I, I saw. First thing that I read about this concept of an internal colony. I mean, of course. Uh, no. No such thing as an internal colony. Okay. Nice try. Anyway. <laughs> Yo, the arrogance of this dude. Hold on. Because this this is a hill that he wants uh wants to die on. There's no such thing as an in internal colony. Uh nice try. Uh Harold Cruz writes an essay. I believe this essay may have been written in 1957. The name of the essay, Revolutionary Nationalism and the Afro-American. If you read the essay, he has an entire section called The American Negro, a subject of domestic colonialism, i.e. an internal colony, right? He breaks it down in great detail and explains all of the ways in which uh, the, the, the black population um, within the United States is very much a part of the so-called third world and we are very much engaged in a colonial struggle and we are tied to the broader colonial struggle that is happening throughout the world right so to call yourself a nationalist and you don't know just basic fucking like concepts again uh you should probably be um embarrassed but that's a hill that you want to die on so we'll let you die on it so let me continue to read here where were we at? 3516 is where we want to be. Johnson and I were having. But um, one, one of the biggest challenges that I have with this notion of a gynocracy, because again, if you go back to the definition of it, right, a government or rule by women or any society or culture that is controlled by women, well, how are societies controlled? Societies are controlled through institutions because people we have a limited we have a limited lifespan right most of us i mean if you live to be 100 years old that's that's a good thing right but like most of us are going to probably have 100 years on this earth but nations and and peoples have a much longer lifespan and in order for them to be stabilized that requires the development of institutions right? uh, not necessarily it's called traditions it's called culture um traditions and culture are the domain of family family is an institution in fact family is the primary institution of all societies of which the secondary institutions are built around right so it starts with fucking institutions right but i'll i'll let you continue to talk <laughs> uh people naturally stabilize themselves to cooperate you have plenty of uh, native people have been around for 60, 50, 50 60,000 years. They don't have any institutions. They have cultures. You pass it down from, from parent to child. That's where is that? Where is that? What institution houses the culture, BGS? Quick, real quick, just answer quick. What institution houses the culture of a people? What institution is in place so that the culture of the community is passed from parent to child? That's the family. The family consists of the male and the female. So it's imperative that these two principles are in alignment, right? And that they work in harmony in order for that institution to stay together, in order for that culture to stay together, in order for that people to stay together right this is again basic shit like very basic shit but i guess you know when you are the smartest person in the room you can uh you know get away with it to be honest fam it, it seems like you being a contrarian just to be contrarian like the points that you are are, are are nitpicking here like i feel like 
you know, Dr. Asa Hilliard used to say, like, you know, when they can't defeat your ideas, they'll resort to characterizing them. So you listen to my um, my episode on the gynocracy. And to be honest, you didn't even listen to the episode. Like you did a play by play um, on, on, on the intro. Um, but even all of the points that you are pushing back on, I'm like, why is he even pushing back on that? Like, that's just. Even if I wasn't well, well read or well, well studied, some of this shit is just basic common sense, which you should have. But if you are well read and well studied, like I don't even understand like how you don't know this or even how you're disagreeing with this. And I understand why you're doing it, because if you accept certain facts or bring certain facts into your analysis, then it starts to create some issue for your gynocracy analysis. And because your gynocracy analysis analysis or propaganda or narrative is so important to you because that's so important that you hold on to it. The introduction of new facts and ideas that uh, go against, right, or contradict that, it causes cognitive dissonance. So it's a lot easier for you to just say that, you know, that fact is some bullshit. No, it doesn't. Like, it's a, it's a lot easier for you to, like, just write things off because, um, you know, the truth is inconvenient. You know, inconvenient truths, right? So 3624, let me keep on moving to right here. Keep on moving right to 36. Boom, right here. Here's language and terms as well. So when I said the word civilization, right, although I'm speaking to y'all and it may have one connotation, from my perspective, civilization also has like racist baggage, right? But I wouldn't be having, I mean, the fact that I'm using English, right, there's going to be a lot of contradictions in the things that I say anyway, right? So I'll try to stop having those mental pauses when I say certain words that trigger that trigger me internally, right? Because when I say the word civilization, I'm like, well, that's triggering because of its historical and racial baggage. So I do apologize for that. I'm just letting y'all know how my, how my mom. How does civilizations have racial baggage? Hmm, okay. I'm not going to ask. Okay. Again, this guy is supposed to be well read, but he's being like he's an asshole. He's being an, a nuts an unnecessary contrarian, but he's also irresponsible um in the sense that he, as a master teacher, is influencing a group of men. So, like basic fucking facts. He asked the question. I'm I'm I, I use the term civilization. And I stopped when I used it because of the racial, I was explaining like, you know, civilization has some um, racial baggage. So I think that we have to be careful, like how and when we use it. Right. That's how, that's what I was explaining. He goes out of his way to say, how does civilization have racial baggage? But OK, so let me just explain very quickly how the, the fucking concept of civilization has racial baggage, which, to be very honest, man, like he should know. Right. Many of us are familiar with this uh, this concept known as the so-called uh, the white man's burden, right? And if you if you look at the image, see if I can blow up the image a little bit. If you look at the image here, right, what you see is a white man with uh, a bunch of non-white people on his back. And he's climbing up the mountain of civilization. So as you see, they're they're going from superstition to brutality to vice, from slavery to cannibalism to from ignorance to cruelty to the top, which is the white man's civilization, right? But if, even if you go um, beyond that, right? If you look at sociocultural evolution, like they were very clear. I mean, Sheikh Antediat writes an excellent book, um, uh, from, uh, uh, Civilization and Barbarism. Right, he breaks it down. Right, the 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 racist connotation of this, or the racial baggage that this term civilization this has baked into it. But like, I mean, come on. Like when it, right here, it says the ideas of progress, i.e., European progress, them progressing to dominate in the fucking planet. The, the the idea of progress led to the fixed stages through which human societies progress, usually numbering three, savagery, barbarism, and civilization, right? So you can go and read all of this shit um, on your own because there's a bunch of like, you know, there's a bunch of stuff out there. Hold on one second. Talk your shit, Professor I'm a wallet. I'm not even hyped, I mean, today because I'm, I'm a little bit under the weather, right? So this is a really... This is a really sober kind of like response to like the insanity of an old man who should have been put out the pasture a very long time ago. But 
you know, he's been hanging around in these fucking Google Hangouts for too long with the, um, you know, I ain't going to do no name calling, but um, let me keep on moving. All right. So let me keep moving because this is just too easy. Vital needs that every group has. Right. So when we talk about um, a society or a group being controlled, institutions are what control that particular group. So to say that the black community is under the control of black women, I'm like, well, what institutions in the black community have, have black women built? Right. I don't see them. Now, what we have is a situation and we have a situation where as a community, we have been and we continue to be warred upon. And as a result, the males, the men have been removed from our community because when you are a colonized group. They have not been removed from your community. Okay. Um, we can handle this in so many different ways. First and foremost, in order to enslave a group of people, you must first defeat and physically control the men of that group. You don't get you don't get to enslave and subjugate a group of people without first doing that. And we already know that history, so I don't necessarily have to walk you through that. Like we've had conversations about the removal of manhood within the black community. Um, the threat that manhood represents, which is why black men have not been allowed. And by allowed, I mean like the penalty of manhood under the system where you're subjugated is death, right? Death or imprisonment. So when you talk about manhood, like manhood provides for a people its vital needs, right? It provides um, or it erects the institutions that meets the vital needs of the people. There is no institution within the black community or there is no institution that presently serves the black community, meaning food, clothing, shelter, protection that has been erected or is either controlled or maintained by black men. Right. So that's one perspective. Right. That's one perspective of the conversation that we can have. But the other and perhaps um, more important is this post um, emancipation the attack and removal of black men has gone on kind of like unabetted, whether it be via mass incarceration, uh, rather, whether it be through police brutality, whether it be through lynching or whether it be through removing black men from the economic market, right? Black men are not even absorbed into the economic market. Um, Sidney Wilhelm writes an essay in 1969, Who Needs the Negro, where he's talking about basically black men have been rendered obs obsolete. So to say that black men have not been removed, um, Dr. Bobby Wright, he does a fantastic analysis of all of the um, the statistics that black men, um, uh, uh, statistics around black male well-being in 1980. And with this analysis, he was basically trying to show that when black men are at mating age, given all the society, societal statistics based upon the institutions and policies of this particular na nation, it makes it so that there is an unnatural um, gender imbalance between black men and black women, right? And that that relates to removal of black men, especially from like the dating market, but that's a different like conversation um, that we could have, but I don't necessarily want to have it right now. So somebody said Dr. Bobby Wright was ahead of his time. That he was. Shout out to Dr. Bobby Wright. All right, so let me let me just keep going on here. BGS be wildin'. Um he got kind of mad at me right here. Hold on, play this part. Where is this? 41. He was a bit frustrated here. <laughs> so I have a very big problem with us being in a situation where as a community we are being warred upon. And we have a group of men who I refer to as the guardians of the gynocracy that are developing or giving or, or giving a set of frameworks to men who don't want to fight the men anyway that makes them feel that makes that group of men feel more justified in 
assaults and or attacks on the women in our group. I think and no assaults or attacks on women in our group. Okay, you're a coward, dude. You're a coward to face the problem. You don't face the problem. You don't want to solve the problem that's been internal, okay? Since 19, basically, it was black men that faced off uh, white men from 1945 to 1970 and did what no other group on the planet has done, which is, which is basically demand and get equity or semi-equality being a uh, low caste minority. Ask the Uyghurs in China. I, yo, first of all, yo, I don't even know how he says this without suffering from like sub supreme cognitive di <laughs> dissonance. You know what I mean? And and not furthermore, for you to say that, you know, you're so astute, like when it comes to geopolitics and then make the argument that, uh, you know, black men fought this particular system to an ideological standstill, it makes you look stupid. Right. Because we understand like the public relations and why certain policies um uh, and laws had to be implemented here in the U.S. so the so that the U.S. could pursue, right, is foreign agenda, right? You can't uh, pursue a, a foreign agenda of soft colonization or soft power, right, or or, or or um taking over as the colonizing party, where you're reaching out to black nations as a so-called friend, trying to compete, you know, with the with the communist bloc. You can't do that when the communist bloc is making hay of your own uh 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 hypocrisy right you can't you can't hold on one second i want to super chat sister courtney michelle i appreciate the super chat sis i appreciate the super chat so yeah you can't you can't it's impossible to do that so um if you if you look even when you look at um when um brown versus board of education like when it passes the supreme court it literally passes the Supreme Court 10 days after the French got <laughs> got the ass kicked in uh, Vietnam. Right. So um, when the U.S. understood that it was entering the Vietnam War, like there's a document and I, I, I have a lecture series. Well, it's a part of a lecture series. I have a lecture series called um, the Shrike Drum Le Lecture Series, the Political Awakening of African Consciousness. And within that, I have a three part lecture called the Ethnic Cleansing of Black America and the black immigrant paradox. Um, and I mean, there's a lot of information in there, but like, I'm just saying like BGS knows better than this. Right. Um, but the fact that he calls me a coward <laughs> for saying that um, black men would rather fight against black women and the so-called gynocracy than fight against the men who are framing, right. Who are the framers of our particular society and our communities that we live in like I, I don't i don't get it man i really don't get it like my energy my energy feels kind of low today man i'm not going i'm not going i'm not going to lie my energy feels a little bit low today but let me just i'll, I'll read one last point because like i said i didn't want to go i didn't want to go more than an hour on responding to him so i guess the last point that i'll read comes from right here and then I'll drop the link in the chat and we can build for a little bit before I tap out. This is the last point I want to read right here. Uh, down the path that it's going, which is assimilation. It's not uh, extermination. It's going to be, it's assimilation. Like most groups do. Assimilation is actually normal because to be honest and true, there should have never been a Negro race in the first place. There is no Negro race in Mexico, okay? Even though we're black slaves in Mexico, there's no Negro race. They're all Mexicans or they're all whatever, whatever they want to be called. They're all blended in, which is normal. It's called admixture. Anyway, let's continue. Some things. Um, all right. I, I just want to stop there because I, I don't really think that there's a need to even keep going because when he says like you know we should have assimilated a long time ago and he, this is that he, like this is the only person who will tell you that he's a black nationalist that's in a gender war and is also promoting assimilation like this dude is retarded 
like he's a drunk like clearly like he ain't got it all upstairs he's a black nationalist that's in a gender war and is promoting assimilation and is saying assimilation does not mean extermination we should have been assimilated and became uh uh, you know, Negroes. Hold on, Mamani, you're absolutely right because I was looking at the chat tonight. <laughs> I've, been, I've been looking at the chat tonight. Uh, I'm about to drop the link in the chat so y'all can pop up. But hold on, I'll drop the link in right now. Like I said, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but I just want y'all to understand what does it, what does assimilation mean, right? Cultural assimilation is the process in which a minority group or culture comes to resemble a society's minor, majority group or assume the values, behaviors, and beliefs of another group, whether fully or partially. So the question is, what happens to a group of black people within a, a, a society whose values are based upon um, racism, and white supremacy? What happens to a group of black people who embrace those values or assimilate into a culture that hates them? That's what's known as culture-side or menticide. Right. That is a precursor to extinction or to extermination. Right. So like I can't it's very difficult for me, fam, to to take to take BGS serious. Um, because and in, in my opinion, just like hearing his critiques, a lot of ways, it seems like he's being combative or uh, contrarian just for the sake of being contrarian. He doesn't want to lose a grip on the influence that he feels that he has. So that kind of is what it is, fam. So I, like I said, I wasn't, I didn't plan on going all night. In fact, I have an interview in about an hour that I have to record. So I dropped the link into the chat. If anybody wants to pull up right now, y'all can do so. I'll leave, a, leave a link in the chat for a couple of seconds. So he said, they aren't going to assimilate us. They need us at a, as a bottom cast to prop up the system. Um, Somebody said divesticide. Yeah, BGS is a clown. You know, he's an absolute clown. Shout out to Eric Cunnins. Somebody said Ho Chi Minh said that without learning about the Haitian Revolution, your revolution would fail. Shout out to Ho Chi Minh. Shout out to Sister Afia. Uh, family, this was light. This was light. Like I said, this might be my last my last stream of the year. <laughs> I appreciate everybody who sent in the super chats, um, any cash apps, all that good stuff. I appreciate that, that. If you are still here, make sure you hit the like button. Um, if you're pulling up, put a one in the chat. Otherwise, I'm going to tap out because, like I said, I didn't plan on uh, giving this guy too much more of my time. Kind of, I said really everything that I needed to say yesterday, but I just wanted y'all to hear his response to me, and I just wanted to respond to it in real time. Um, in a nutshell, if I wanted to summarize his response, um, it would probably be that it was a lie. <laughs> like he basically um, put out a lot of mistruths, told told a lot of shit that clearly, um, you know, he doesn't. Hold on, let me add Sister Na Naisha to the stream. How you doing, Naisha? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. How are you? Greeting, um, my brother. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How are you? <laughs> yes, I, 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 I enjoy you and um, great work as the usual. I just have a quick, quick question. Um, I know you, you are um, English, the memory language. So please be patient. Mm -hmm. I know you are a very strong believer of Pan Africanism. But shouldn't we talk about the whole job situation that is coming? You know, the mandatory laws that are happening. <clears throat> uh, I don't want to necessarily have a conversation about that on 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 YouTube. Okay. Are you talking about the 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 C nineteen situation? Yes, that is happening. The mandatory laws that are getting done now. Mm -hmm. Yes. On our people and the in the number of deaths that are happening in combat you know everything and of course the the, um, the coming uh, technical uh, we're going into like you said 2030 the great reset that is coming you the know? Great, great reset is already here yes. so what are we going to do because i think here's the thing 
we cannot go around all this gender war all the time with um, really serious issues. And I think we need to learn to buy land, to create our own food, how to keep food. Those are things I think we should be, you know, focusing now, training now. How are we going to survive um, in the next coming years, you know? Yeah, yeah. You're asking the right, qu- you're, you're asking the right questions. And I think that um, if those are the questions you're asking, you need to find yourself around people who have uh, similar concerns so that y'all can collectively come up with solutions. Right. Because I don't think the, the, the solutions are going to be mass based. I think that there'll be pockets of us where we can develop, um, you know, uh, communities that can be enforced into networks and grow from there. But it all starts locally wherever you are. So it's important um, that you either find a group of individuals or an organization that understands the significance of the things that you are bringing up. And if you can't find one, then create one and find like-minded people that you can work with in order to prepare for that situation. Because that is a very real situation and we are vulnerable um, as a people yeah. wherever we are, especially if we are dependent um, upon you know these antiquated systems and the economies of our enemies for survival. Exactly. We are, you know, we are very um, vulnerable and very... Um, you know, Baba, we are a very traumatized people, and I do understand that we have a lot that we are dealing with. Yes. And I do understand that, that there is a lot that we, all of us individually, are dealing with. And I hear and I, and I understand that. And, um, yes, okay. but uh, yeah. But thank you for your work and what you are doing. And um, yes. But we should talk about um, the food chain that we have to build, you know, the food. We need to start being control of, on our own food, you know. I agree. And this I, is agree. Where, yeah. I agree. There are a lot of, um, I don't know where you're located, um, but mm. I imagine uh, locally where you are, there has to be people doing some type of work around food sovereignty that, you know. Oh, that's mostly white people. <laughs> well, you gotta, you gotta find the you gotta find the black people who are doing it. And, I'm telling and, you, even yeah. you know when I go on YouTube and I, I watch some videos about food uh, um, privatization, mm-hmm. those are white women teaching me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, of course. <laughs> you you know what's you know um, unfortunately or however you want to call it, you could say fortunately, um, white folks still have their survival instinct and they understand danger. So Mm. I think that because they've been allowed to um, be the so-called paternal race and they've experienced freedom and sovereignty and their lifehood and their lifetime in a way that many other groups of people have not, they understand what it means to be free. They understand what the threat of danger and slavery looks like, and they are not willing to accept kind of like a hand to mouth kind of like lifestyle. Many of them are not those who still have their family and cultural institutions um, intact. In, in um, so th- as a result, many of them are preparing. They Thank are you prepping. So you know, to... so. Thank you so much. I didn't want to change your topic or be disrespectful. So I'm going to be, you know, just listen. I appreciate but, uh, you coming out. Hmm. All right. Thank Thanks you. for joining. Peace, peace, peace. Brother J.H., what's going on, my brother? Hey, what's going on, Moala? How you doing, man? I can't complain. I'm I'm a little bit under the weather, man. So my my energy today, like, you know, I kind of wanted to bring the fire on this, but then at the beginning, the Wi-Fi shit happened, and then I was like, you know what? Let me just respond to this idiot real quick. And get hey, you know what? I got to give you your props, man. Cause I've always had my little, I got to put it, gripes with the manosphere. You know, I thought it had some good points, but I thought they were kind of. You know, messed up. So it's, it's good to see there's a lot is of there, brothers. Is there where you can turn your microphone down or something like that? It's getting, I'm getting a lot of interference. Hold on one second. Man, you, don't, you don't sound clear. Can you hear me now? Yeah, that's a lot better. Okay, yeah. I just had to take my uh, Bluetooth off. Um, yeah, so I'm just glad to see uh, brothers like yourself pushing back against the more toxic uh, traits of the manosphere is really appreciated because, you know, 
like last uh like your last stream or whatever you had a lot of divestors in here which is kind of funny to me but anyway mm -hmm. it's it's if that's the only thing that they see you know then that's what they're going to think the majority of a black men are on and so it's good to see that you know you're you know taking up the fight and pushing back against people like you know bgs you know i kind of think i'm just one of those old failures who couldn't make it in you know real life so now he's you know in his 60s trying to you know cling on to something some level of meaningless meaningless uh in this world so uh i want to give you you know give you your props yeah i appreciate that fam um, you, man. yeah like I, I think when he i mean unfortunately these kind of spaces are what they are these virtual spaces these online spaces so i don't think you're ever going to have a balanced representation Right. I think that, you know, there's a reason why the most toxic kind of like flock to, to some of these spaces because it becomes, it does become a space where we can trauma bond. Right. You know what I mean? And get support for ideas that probably wouldn't be supported um, in the real world. But with all that being said, um, I think that those of us who are in the real world and those of us who are not, who don't, who, who don't want to be represented by what we see in these spaces, I think we have a responsibility to to do a lot more organizing and institution building so that we can actually show that we can be effective at the things that we're talking about. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely right. Yeah, that's it. That's it. But yeah, I'm about to tap out. I don't think I'm gonna stay on past seven thirty tonight because I got I got a I got an interview at eight thirty. Okay, uh, man. Tea well, some medicine. It was great talking to you, and uh, I'll uh, I'll go back to the regular chat. Yo, I'll I'll All right. Peace. Yo, 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 yo. So, family, like I said, this was light tonight. Um, got a little slight headache. I mean, got a little, got a little cold symptoms going on here. Um, I think that this is probably going to be my last live stream of 2021. Um, got a lot planned for 2022. Um, but if uh you haven't done so already on my about tab. Make sure you go and sign up for my newsletter um, so that we can keep you in a loop with everything that we got going on on the channel. Um, please do enroll in the Patreon community, a.k.a. the African War College. Uh, we have the African War College hoodies, so you can get uh, those now uh, as well. Hold on one second. I want to always got to give a shout out to Sister Afia Oni. So she says, excellent program, Omawale Africa, on an amazing season. I look forward to rocking with you. Yo, I, I look forward to rocking with y'all in 2022 as well. I ain't going to be able to rock with my barber into 2022, you know what I'm saying? I looked at his calendar. He's booked into the New Year's, so I'm going to be heavy on the do-rag game for the rest of the year. <laughs> but um, I'm about to rock out, y'all. Like, I, if I haven't told y'all before, I genuinely, genuinely, genuinely appreciate y'all. I genuinely appreciate the support that y'all continue to give to the channel. All of the new subscribers, all of the old subscribers, the people who hit the like button, the people who send the cash apps, the people who send the super chats. I appreciate y'all. I thank y'all. I hope that y'all have a fantastic end of the year in 2021. And I hope that all good fortune and good health and prosperity finds you in 2022. All right. So I'm going to tap out Omawale over and out. Peace.